If you yearn to go back to a simpler age where you dangle a pin on a strand of horsehair tied to a willow wand you have cut from yonder copse, forget it. Today's angler can reach the parts that others have only dreamed of thanks to new rods, new reels and even an innovative method of mending waders. Somewhere deep in the heart of the Sportfish Open weekend, I find the Sims guys. Uh, things do wear out, uh, there's lots of things when you're fishing, could yeah. be a barbed wire fence, could be thorns and things like that or general wear. Well, these are obviously the Gore-Tex weirder, got a Gore-Tex uh, membrane in there and what we've done today, part of the whole thing with the Sims weirders is they can be quite easily repaired. Tom is our weirder repair expert here from Oslo, so we have a little demonstration where we use uh, something called isopropanol alcohol which does a little bit of magic and it shows up any pinholes in the wader. It's really quite clever. If it, if it has any punctures it will show up like a little black spot. Mm -hmm. uh, so easy to find and so easy to repair. So you can then just use a bit of aqua seal and repair your waders very easily. While the sportfish shop is getting the bite into customers, cramming into it, admiring and buying tackle, on the grass outside is a large marquee stuffed with the great and good from the angling industry, showing off products old-fashioned and newfangled. This is where to find out what's catching the eye of the modern fisherman. A lot of this need for technology comes down to where we are fishing, and some of that is the fault of agencies such as Frontiers. Frontiers has been around since 1969, and we sort of invented the idea of fishing travel. When we started, with the exception of a little bit of salmon fishing abroad, uh, which Russia was really beginning to create, uh, it was a new it was a new thing to do. That is what's called a GT or a giant trevally. You catch it in the Seychelles, most famously, but other places as well. Um, but that's a sea trout from Rio Grande on, on Tierra del Fuego. Um, the, the sort of green and yellow fish down the bottom is a dorado. From Bolivia. There is a good showing from one of the UK's foremost tackle companies, Hardy Grades, based in the northeast of England. Howard Croston, head of product development, is bringing a new range of technology to ignorant southerners like me. So we, we produce fishing equipment now that you can use basically all over the globe. Um, we do everything from, from big game uh, fly fishing equipment right through coarse fishing, carp fishing, sea fishing. Um, technology is a very, very big part of our business. Heritage is also a very big part. We still manufacture cane rods from scratch, um, but at the other end of the scale, we're working with very, very advanced nano-loaded resins, uh, new fibre types. Um, so really, it's a, it's one of those things. It's actually a really sort of quirky company. We've got the history. We're one of the oldest fishing tackle companies in the world. Yet we're right at the cutting edge of modern technology as well. The fly tying here has a modern twist, and if you are watching this on YouTube, you can click on these films to see them in full. The mayfly hatch on southern English chalk streams is worryingly late this year, so Chris Reeves of fishingclass.co.uk is tying an all-purpose nymph on the partridge of Redditch stand. Meanwhile, for those who have given up on freshwater altogether, Joe Stevenson on the ukbass.com stand is tying an all-purpose fry fly. Also at the show is one of the biggest names in fly fishing, Charles Jardine, who seems to be confusing himself with his distant cousin Douglas. It might be May, but it's not perfect weather for either fly fishing or cricket. Sorry, it's jolly cold in here. And I... <laughs> Do you want a hanky? I'd love a hanky, I just haven't, got, haven't made a hanky to go with this. Basically the idea, Charlie, was to get a bunch of fly lines. I did exactly what they said on the tin to dispel myth, to give people coming into the sport especially a degree of confidence and also a line that is eminently fishable. There's one over there just under that was the line of choice of the fishers at Grafham because it met exactly the requirements at the back end of last year. We're still talking about bass fishing and fishing for pollock or goldfish or anything really that swims and in the sea that we can fish for with a fly because that is the new, I was going to say battleground, it is sometimes, um, but that's a new era for us and a new 
a new way of looking at the sport. It's taking it out of the confines of just purely, you know, the, what we would expect, trout fishing on rivers and still waters and reservoirs, and saying, look, you can do this. Go on holiday, Take go mackerel fishing, go bass fishing. Here's a nice little line to, to take with you and do it. Fishing tackle design has taken a leap forward in the last few years. People are taking their rods to new heights, which is why manufacturers have been to talk to the aerospace industry. Carbon fibre technology is not developed for fishing rods, it's developed for the aerospace industry and the Airbus, which you'll know about, there's 300 and odd Airbuses being made in the world at the minute. That is what the, the, the material is developed to be lighter and stronger. And the fishing rod industry rides piggybacks, if you like, on the back of that. But the range of materials now that are available for making fishing rods is huge. So the skill is, it's a marriage of art and science, it's the skill is knowing which types of carbon fibre materials to, to match up. Because you don't just have one type in a rod, you may have three or four different types positioned at different places down the blank. Another US rod manufacturer, Sage, is based in the same town as aircraft maker Boeing. We get a lot of research out of Boeing. They bring it to us, we bring a little bit to them. And we have a great relationship with a number of the engineers there who are fishermen. They love to come over for the little break it gives them. And we have a great time with Boeing. It's very important because they're one of the leaders in aerospace. And that's where all the great material comes from. We're always interested in making something lighter and stronger. And literally what they're doing with the new 787 Dreamliner is really in this rod to a degree, so it really works out pretty nicely for us. Sportfish has run this show over a May weekend every year for a dozen years. <laughs> it's a long time. It's yeah, it's a long been, a lot time. Of, been a lot of shows. But, but it's something our, our customers expect of us now, really, and, and we love putting it on. It's, it's, it's great. Entry's free, parking's free. We've got guys coming from all over the world. Um, we've got guys from the United States, Scandinavia, and even Scotland, you know, exotic <laughs> locations like that. All the, all the retailers are in there showing all their new products and sort of all the new and exciting things they brought with them. And it's a great opportunity for our customers to have a look at those and then come back and give us the feedback of what they've seen and what they really like. And that sort of gives us sort of a good sort of head start on the, you know, later on in the year to bring in those products that they've seen. It's really important that uh, it gives, it kind of showcase for that technology and people can not only see, they see the rods, but the experts from the companies that have designed them, they'll just they'll chat to you yeah. and they'll go out and they'll cast the rods with you on the water. So you can you can hear the full story of the rods development and actually see see the guy who's designed it casting it, which I think is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Um, you've got all this uh, kit, all this technology, all these people here. Yep. How many fish have you caught today? Uh, one. <laughs> uh, actually, fishing's been hard today, and this is a great fishery. So you know, I, I don't understand that, but it, it's cold. For the fish is the same as it is for us. You know, we've had a run up um, last few days, there's been big flocks of swallows um, over the lake and they've been eating uh, buzzers that have been hatching. That's not going on today because they, they, they're not playing. So, uh, anyway, so it's not, it's not a fishing day. It's a great day for a show, I think.